Hey, my name is Ben Fletcher. I'm with the Pennsylvania Restaurant and Lodging Association. Glad you could join us for another edition of our Short Takes. Joining us today is Craig LeBan. Uh, Craig has been a food journalist in Philadelphia since 1998, uh, one year before I joined the food scene in Philadelphia. And Craig has been recognized by the James Beard Foundation, uh, as well as the Association of uh, Food Journalists. Um, I've been an avid reader of Craig's uh, since he has arrived. I'm a big fan of your uh, your writing style and your uh, approach to uh, food criticism. So thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for the kind words, Ben. It's my honor to be here. What is your um, opinion on food criticism post-pandemic? Um, do you think your point of view will, will change at all? And should guests' expectations change? Yeah, that's a, that's a giant question that we're <laughs> all asking ourselves. And, you know, to be honest with you, we, I feel like we're so in the moment of living some unprecedented history. You know, I wake up every day and I think, you know, what are, what are we going to be writing about this week? Because we're, 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 we are sort of in the survival mode status right now. Everything is changing. Um, certainly, um, you know, I'm not giving out bells and restaurant reviews, um, not since, you know, the weekend of, you know, March 15th was, I believe, sort of the last, the last weekend that we had, uh, actually March, yeah, March 15th was the last weekend that I gave a rated restaurant review. Because who knew, you know, those things were in the pipeline and who knew what was coming. It was so unimaginable that we could be, you know, shutting down our whole restaurant scene, all restaurants for, for a period of months. And the damage done to sort of you know the businesses, but to sort of the fundamental relationship that we, as as citizens of a city, the thriving food scene now have to our restaurants has been altered um, dramatically. Certainly in the short term and in the long term, altered as well. Um, you know where critics fit into this is 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 to me it's like such a secondary or third you know, third phase down the road because, you know, we just, we need to get through this and get restaurants kind of back functioning again before we start holding them accountable, you know, on a higher level when we're talking about customer service, when there's a lot of choices and we're, we're, we're really there to guide our readers through the restaurant scene and making choices. And then, you know, there's a service aspect of what we do, but and we're far from, you know, I feel like we're very far from getting back to a point where, you know, I'm going to go back into restaurants sort of critically, you know, and hold everybody accountable for a dish that's cooked well or not cooked well. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've backed up to more fundamental um, levels of discussion. And it's sort of up to those of us who cover the scene to sort of, I, I think, uh, approach it with a, a bigger vision and ask the bigger questions, you know, about where are we going? What's it going to be like when, when there's outdoor dining comes on? What's it going to be like, you know, sitting inside of a restaurant? Um, these are, you know, we we cover the restaurant scene as journalists. You know, the criticism is sort of a, a next phase that, you know, I hope one day to review another restaurant, but it's going to be a while. I mean, and, and nobody knows, and it seems like a moving target. And, um, you know, I'm certainly not thinking about that now. I'm thinking about, you know, how can I tell our readers about what's going on in the lives and businesses of the restaurants uh, and the food people and the, and the servers and the who are sitting home out of work and the, the fishermen who are waiting to fish because all the restaurants are out of business. Um, it's a fascinating time to be a journalist and I happen to cover the world of food. Um, the criticism I think is gonna wait. The service criticism, I think there's definitely roles for critics to think critically about um, the restaurant world and how it's gonna be reshaped by this. And so in that sense, there is a role for criticism, absolutely, for people to think, you know, in in in, in very you know, mindful ways about, you know, what 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 role do restaurants play in our society? Where do we want it to go? Um, you know, the only the only analogy I can think of for where I'm at is, you know, when Katrina hit New Orleans, um, where I had previously worked um, 23 years ago, I was lucky to miss a major you know hurricane event, but my one of my successors, um, Brett Anderson, you know, took 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 several months off from actually doing critical reviews of restaurants following that, because it's just you know what restaurant 
people are struggling with now is survival. And if they're not around, there's nothing to, you know, there's nothing to criticize, right? Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's too many unknowns to know what it's going to look like. I'm confident that there will be something, you know, in the future very soon as far as just restaurants getting back up and running. But to, to the point where we're all just going to restaurants like we used to, um, we're many months from that, it feels like to me. Will you, um, and there's so many great stories out there, you know, and I know you're going to find them. Um, but will you give, uh, will you give everybody a heads up, like, when you're back? Like, bells are about to be dropped again. That's a good uh, idea. You know, like, again, I mean, you know, these are, these are discussions we haven't even had yet at the newspaper. We are just yeah. this, you know, incredible, you know, vortex of energy and ideas are going around, like, you know, what what do we do to cover what's happening in front of us? Because there's just you just don't want to miss anything. Have not had those conversations. Um, you know, uh, I'm all about. I've always been uh, about fairness. You know, in terms of how we apply our standards and expectations to restaurants. So yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of discussion ahead of time before we're ready to sort of reset and say, okay, game on, people. All right there, you go. We're back and ready to go. Um, can you share with me uh, maybe some of your biggest uh, gripes you've received from restaurants that you have reviewed? Do you mean, um, could you refine that question a lot? Give me a little bit more context. Do you mean recently or in general? You know, I'm not sure what you're, what you're I guess to. in in general, like is there, you know, when, when you, um, you know, you, you, you review probably, what, what what do you review, like 30 restaurants a year, maybe? Uh, no, it, you know, so there's, we, we, you know, cover a lot of restaurants in different levels of coverage in terms of rated reviews, yeah. the restaurants that get, you know, bells, you know, those are key to Sunday, to weekend um, slots, and they, and they involve a lot of work. So there's 40 plus, and then, you know, in addition, we've been doing a dining guide, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll cover, you know, I'll write about hundreds of restaurants over the course of the year. And even if they don't have a bell attached to them, some of them are small, there's always a bit of a critical voice, um, you know, attached to them. You know, we're, we're curating this content. Uh, it's not just, they're just not listicles, you know what I mean? All right, well, all right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, but let, so let me ask you something else. Can you share some of like the positive responses that you've received from restaurants because of your, uh, because of your reviews? It doesn't necessarily have to be yeah, a, you know, it's you know, interesting. Like there, there's some four bell reviews that, you know, I aspire to. I've, I've been on the, I've been on your end of a couple three bell reviews, which is nice. And a couple two bell reviews. I don't think I've ever, I don't know if I've ever got, I don't know if Juniper was a one bell and I've been fortunate to what, Juniper never have Juniper Common? common? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever been. It wasn't a two bell or I can say you that. Nobel prize from you, but you know. <laughs> Rare, rare, but hopefully deserved uh, when those happen, you know. Right. Uh, it's, it's tricky, you know, you definitely want the rate, you know, if you're going to do a rating system, uh, you want the, the, you want the ratings to mean something. It's an uninflated rating system. Uh, generally, I like to think of it that way. So by the time you get up to the the two is, a, two is a recommendation, you know, definitely sending people to a restaurant with some caveats. Um, you know, three is meant to be, you know, a real achievement. And then, you know, four, there's only six or seven of those in the whole region. And they, they set a certain magical standard. So, you know, I've always tried to, to have the, not just the ratings, but the reviews mean something, you know, the words behind the reviews mean something. And hopefully... Um, when you read a review that I write, you know, my goal is that you understand, you know, what I'm talking about. It's not some, some, uh, some, some criticism on a whim, you know, without any sort of, you know, reference point to it. Um, it's a very, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. This is a very intimate exchange when you review somebody's restaurant and you tell the world everything you think about a place. And, you know, a lot has been said, and it's sometimes, it's pretty rare sometimes that I have a lot of follow-up with restaurateurs afterwards. You know, it's just sort of, it could be, uh, maybe the, I welcome it if people want to write me. I always like to hear from people afterwards, you know, whether they agree or disagree. Um, and it's, it's almost, you know, 99% of the time, it's a very respectful exchange that's sort of built around um, constructive, you know, taking comments as constructive criticism which is sort of the ideal um scenario but you know i think most people who get written about understand 
you know, I'm, I'm writing for my readers. That's my primary goal is to tell, tell people, you know, where to go to restaurants, where restaurants fit into the big picture. When you get there, how do you maximize your experience? So I'm not writing press releases. Uh, I tell the truth in ways that sometimes, you know, I understand criticism is hard to be, to put all your energy and creativity into something and it's just not maybe working or not working that night. Um, that's why multiple visits are built into reviews and, you know, I wait time before restaurants open, etc. But I have had, you know, a number of exchanges with people who, um, you know, they sometimes they'll explain to you what went wrong with a dish, or you know, afterwards, um, I've had um, I've had people tell me um, that the reviews have brought new audiences to their restaurant. You know, I cover a wide range of audience of restaurants. You know, a lot of restaurants you you already know about. They're the big big names in Center City. Everybody's you know knows knows that knows they're happening, and they're kind of waiting for a verdict. Yeah. Um, a lot of those places. Um, you know that maybe the review has less of an impact overall um, than some of the other places. You know where we're we're sort of digging into other parts of the city that sometimes re- receive less attention. And you can bring you can you can certainly direct a new audience to a restaurant, and they see a sort of a, a gust of air in their sails. And you hear that, and you know, especially for a place that's that's really worthwhile. And uh, it's really good to hear, you know, that people are, you know, maybe they needed to hear a word from somebody they knew and trusted to sort of give it a try. And, and I, and I, I get a lot of feedback from readers, you know, and that's, that's, that's encouraging, but I've had, you know, I've had emails from, from restaurateurs who, whose business was a little slow and, and, and the review has helped them do something as, as important as find healthcare to be able to get enough revenue to sort of generate some pay for some health care at, at a key moment. I had no idea this was going on behind the scenes. And I've also given um, quite negative critical reviews to places and heard from uh, chefs through text or email. Uh, and you just, you see that name pop up on your phone and you're like, oh, Oh boy, what's this going to say? Right. And, uh, and most often it's somebody saying, you know, Thank you for the honest, you know, detailed review. We're going to like try to be better next time. And, you know, as a critic, you know, that to me is a very professional for sure. response. I mean, I've had, I've had also heard from restaurateurs who had received years and years of glowing reviews and then they have a project that doesn't measure up and then they want to have meetings with my editor and they tell them <laughs> I don't understand fine dining and I have a vendetta, you know, people will read into it, all kinds of things. They're from New York. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, these are people, you know, people that you cover for a long time. And as long as you say what they want to hear, you know, you're the greatest right. critic they could have ever, you know, met. Uh, that's, that's my, great. that's, that's my role, you know, to tell the truth. Yeah, for sure. Well, you, you've been doing it. You've been doing it well for a long time. And thank you. Ben. I appreciate it. And, and I appreciate you joining us here today. It's really my pleasure to be here, and uh, I look forward to seeing what's next for this you know, really wonderful food scene. For sure. Thank you so much. Cheers.